Hi folks, Skip Wilson here on, tra on splicing transducer cables. Now when you get a transducer, the directions are generally going to say don't cut the ends of the wire off to uh, facilitate stringing your wire through the boat. Well, if your boat's anything like mine, I can barely get the wire through, let alone a one-inch knob on the end. So cutting the end off is absolutely essential if there's going to be a transducer on this boat. But the manufacturer has good reason for this, because to do a proper splice, which will not introduce a resistance or capacitance into the system, and will properly seal the wire up against moisture, which is a problem on boats, uh, most people simply don't have the skills, of the soldering equipment, uh, and the time. It's going to take about an hour to do a decent splice. Uh, so they just say don't do it. But I'm here to tell you that it can be done, and here's how to correctly do it. So stay tuned. Okay, so your first step is to cut your wire shrink, or your, rather your shrink wrap, uh, at one foot. Put this over the wire before you do anything else. When I made this video, I neglected this step and had to cut my splices off and start all over again. Uh, when, you, uh, when you get that on, you're going to cut the insulation off of the wire. First cut will be at 4 inches from the end. Now be very careful when you cut into this wire and avoid nicking the uh, insulation, the uh, drain shielding, which is a very thin plastic aluminized mylar, uh, paper thin very difficult to keep from doing that. It's not the end of the world if you do, but it's better if you don't. If you nick the wire, then we might want to cut the end off and start over again till you get it right. The second wire, uh, or the second half of the splice, is going to be cut at three inches. Now the reason for the difference uh, is that uh, that extra inch is needed to keep the heat shrink from shrinking when you solder the wires. It needs to get out of the way a little bit, so this will give you your shortest splice and still give you a little bit to work with. Okay, once you've got your mylar sheathing peeled back out of the way, exposing your wires, cut one inch of the insulation off of the end of the wire. The next step is going to be cut some heat shrink to go over those wires at about an inch and three-eighths give or take a little. Be sure to place the heat shrink on the wires before you go any further. Untwist your wires and get them separated so that you can divide them equally in half and cut one half off. This is to allow the wires to wrap around each other without making the bundle too thick to get the heat shrink over it. Now, bend your wires over at half an inch in a 90 degree angle. These two angles will hook into each other and you'll wrap the wire back upon itself to make a nice sturdy bond. Carefully wrap the wires back around themselves and make it as neat and as compact as possible right to the end. Avoid having any whiskers sticking up or any protrusions that can uh, get through the heat shrink and make a bump or worse pierce it and ruin the integrity of the splice. Good soldering skills are essential in the next step. If you don't have an expensive soldering gun uh, you can get by with a lightweight to get the lowest wattage and the smallest tip you can get. Uh, using a good rosin core electronic solder uh, apply a very light coating of solder on there and uh, try not to overheat the wire. That's the biggest problem in dealing with these fine wires. You start peeling that insulation way back. Uh, get a few scraps and practice on it uh, until you get it right. Okay, after you get your solder on there, inspect it carefully for any bumps or sharp points that could poke through that uh, heat shrink wrap. And take a pair of needle nose pliers and kind of work those down. Press that solder around until you get a nice smooth wire to slide that stuff over. Slide your heat shrink over the center of the splice and shrink it. Now in this group we had two wires. <clears throat> They're twisted pair and uh, <clears throat> I soldered them together and finished the splice and then twisted the wires into place and hooked up the drain wire. 
I wrapped the drain wire around the wire bundle to kind of help hold everything in place. And then hook it over each other and give it a, just a little bit of solder to make sure it stays in place. Okay, here's where we need to look at that uh, mylar drain. Uh, its job is to get any extraneous signals out of the wire, whether it's originating in the wire or out from the outside. And it's a very thin plastic which is aluminized on one side, which makes a conductive coating. This coating doesn't conduct very well. It's just to collect the electrons and get them onto that uh, bare drain wire that's included uh, in each set of wires. So what you want to do is return the original drain back, uh, wrap it around the wire tightly as best you can. If it's damaged or missing, uh, get another piece off of another wire. In this video, I used some off of an old printer cable I had laying around to kind of add a little extra insulation and, and repair any damages. Uh, wrap that from end to end, put a little tape on it to hold it in place and get it nice and tight. Okay, now you can move on to the next bundle of wire. Repeat the same process. In this case, there was a three-wire bundle, which meant that I had to uh, had to keep the twists uh, consistent throughout the wire. I had to twist my wires a little bit before I soldered them together. Uh, so keep that in mind. You don't. Uh, it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't do it, but uh, it'll make a better splice if you do. Okay, once you've got all of your wire bundles uh, repaired, spliced, and wrapped with mylar, uh, you get them all nice and tight, and then take another piece of spare uh, mylar and wrap the whole bundle. Uh, keep it as tight as you can, uh, so we'll have a nice uh, compact uh, wire group without a bunch of airspace in between, and uh, be ready to put on your heat shrink for the last step. Okay, to finish up, if you did the first step correctly, you'll have one foot of heat shrink to slide in place and shrink. Uh, when you're done, you're going to have pretty close to a factory original cable. That splice should actually be better than the connections that were originally there. Uh, if you want to make them a little bit more waterproof, if this wire is going to be, in, let's say, in the bilge where it is, uh, has a chance of getting wet, uh, then you might want to add a little ni liquid neoprene to the end of that, that uh, heat shrink just to seal that up so no water can wick down in there. Uh, and you'll have a, a perfectly operational transducer wire. One thing additionally I'd like to point out is uh, these splices are not going to be as strong as the original wire. Most wires include some kind of, some kind of a strain device uh, like string. In this particular case, the wire had a very thick outer sheath uh, which was pretty tough. Uh, now we're depending on simply the heat shrink and those soldered connections. So make sure that when you put that wire in, all the pulling is done before you splice the wire. You don't want to pull on these splices. Uh, they're electrically connect, but not very good uh, mechanically. I uh, hope this has been helpful, and thanks for watching.